Welcome back to the Crochet Crowder. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm gonna show you the Bernat Super Value Herringbone Afghan. So this is uh, one that came in as a request uh, from one of you and I was looking at it and I thought oh, I can film that. That's fine. I've done my homework and now I'm ready to show you how to do this. This is actually pretty simple once you break down all the steps. So let's uh, talk quickly about this pattern. I got a diagram that you can di uh, download that I hand drew for you. That'll be available through the more information link of this video. So let's uh, start talking about this pattern first. So what we have here is a repeating of rows number two through to 13 and you have to do it once and then repeat it nine more times and then finish rows number two through five one last time and then you're done. So all of the instructions are pretty easy. It's mostly all half double crochet except for four rows which are eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So let's uh, show you the diagram that you can download and I put a downloadable copy onto my website and you can look at this here. So what we have here is that we're gonna start off. If you would like to change the size of this afghan you keep it in multiples of four. So you go four, 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 four and when you're satisfied with the width you just add three and then it'll be good to go. Or you can just chain the number that it states here as 160. So what we're going to do in this particular one here is that we are going to be going through rows number uh, one all the way to, uh, going up. So once we get to row number two that's the repeat pattern all the way back up to 13. When we get to row number two all the way to number seven here. Notice that it says back loop. So it says that in the instructions. So all of these half double crochets are in the back loop to create a ribbing a look. Then rows number eight, nine, ten, and eleven all have the herringbone stitch. So you notice that number eight is the same as number ten and nine is the same as number eleven. So all it is is changing the direction of this herringbone in order for you to have that look. So it's actually a pretty neat idea. I think that you're going to love it and uh, once you get that done then you do two more rows of this. Notice that number 12 has no back loop. It doesn't state to do that but we're back on the back loops for number 13 and then you come back down here and start all over again nine times. At the end then you'll finish off rows number two through five and then you're good to go. So for the border which I will not cover in this one here all you gotta just do is just down the uh, side, one side and the other side just evenly space half double crochets all the way down and then before you're good to go you don't have to do anything to the top and it's just one layer of half double crochet going down on each side. So do you think you got up or you're up for this? Let's check and see if you are. So let's begin today and we're gonna start with a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook today using your Bernat Super Value but I am using Karen uh, one pound yarn here on camera with you today. And just notice that you'll see in the pattern that there's a color differential. The color differential is in the herringbone stitch and all the rest of the, the half double crochets are a different color. So I will be showing you that once we get there as well. So let's uh, start off with your first one and let's begin. So we're going to begin today and you need to chain 160. If you'd like to change your sizes keep it in multiples of four and then add three at the end once you're satisfied. So I am going to do a multiple because I don't need to do the whole thing with you on camera. So 160 is your magic number if you like that one. So one, two, three, four. So there's one multiple. One, two, uh, two three and four and there's another one, two, three and four. So once you're satisfied with the width of the project then you can just add three and it will keep it in balance. So one, two, and three. So once you have this done we're gonna work away across on our chain. So just put me on pause now and then see me back here in just a moment. For those carrying on I want you to go third chain from the hook. So count it back. So one, two, turn it over and get the back hump of the third chain. And I want you to half double crochet yourself all the way down. So just going half double crochet. So just wrap and pull through all three loops. So going wrap and into the next chain pull through and then pull through all three loops. And you keep doing that down your chain all the way. So put me on pause here and then I will see you at the end of this chain. So you're gonna come to the very final chain and then that's where you're gonna end. So this is row number one. You'll never be repeating it, anything like this again in the future. So you're going to, uh, well at least in this tutorial. So you're gonna turn your work. Now so I'm just gonna turn my work. This is actually take number two. You can see the stitches are a little stretched. So I got uh, two more rounds or rows up and then I was miscounting my stitches. I'm going to suggest something that is not in the pattern. 
it doesn't state that chain two does not count as a, as a um, stitch. So it's assumed that it is a stitch. The problem with half double crochet is that you can mistake it just like I just did on not getting the right counts all the way across. So what I'm gonna recommend to you is that you're going to chain two and technically that would be a half double crochet and then you jump to the next one. But I found with myself, I'm experienced to 30 years, I was misunderstanding the last stitch. Therefore I was starting to get like this. So what I want you to do and this is normal in half double crochet so I'm not doing anything crazy. Wrap the hook and in going into the back loop. Now if you're new to crochet, the first loop here is the front loop. The next one on the other side is the back loop. And so right in the, where it's coming out, I want you to wrap the hook and go into the back loop only. So the first chaining of two does not count as a stitch. It's just a builder. And when you do that, it's easier to keep counts of your rows. And I want you to go into the back loop and half double crochet all the way down to the end. Okay, so this is something that I'm ad-libbing from the pattern because um, I was screwing up myself and I think it would be very helpful for you if uh, you were doing the same thing. So please do that all the way down and I will see you at the end of the row. So I'm coming up all the way down to the end. So I'm gonna turn my work. Just to keep in mind, you have four sets. Uh, so four, four half double crochets make one set. You have four, four, fours and then you'll have one on the edge and one on the other edge. So just keep that in mind. So now row number three is going to be the same thing that I just taught you but I'm telling you to make the first chain two as just a builder and then coming into the same one and then just half double crochet in the back loop all the way down. Now the, what I'm going to show you is that once we get to the other side, let me just speed up my, my stitch work. Once you get to the other side, it's easier to identify the last stitch when you chain two and it does not count as a half double crochet. So I'm not cheating the system, it's just um, sometimes things are just better that way. Most of the afghans that I design it never counts as a stitch and most of the afghans that I've seen yarn inspirations do um, never counts as a stitch. But when I look at this particular pattern, this one's an oldie so and you know things change over time and this is probably one of them. So when you get to all the way to the other side, here is the last stitch that you see. Okay, so that is where you're going to end. See how it looks better? So that was row number three. Turn your work, chain two and then continue. So I want you to go back and forth till you get to seven rows complete. Okay, so you can actually count each one of these. So you have one, two, three, this is number four. So get up to seven done for me. Just back and forth on the back loops of your half double crochets. Chain your two in the beginning. Don't let it count as a stitch and therefore you'll have a perfect edge as well. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of row number seven. So I've now finished up to row number seven. So what I want to do at this particular point is that I wanna trim my yarn and I want to start off with something new. So I'm just going to trim it and I'm gonna weave in my ends. So just pulling it through. You can pretty much get away with this but of course you can use a darning needle and I will show you that at the end of this tutorial as well if you wanna fast forward to that moment. But you're just gonna weave in your ends for now. Chances are you can trap it under enough. So if you weave it in about uh, an inch, possibly two is better, then you can uh, trap that underneath the stitches and not have to worry about it. So turn it around and lay it down on your, on your lap and let's begin the next row. So in row number eight, in nine, ten, and eleven, we're going to be doing these herring bones. So just to let you know that these chaining two doesn't show the half double crochet that I was talking about in the tutorial, I ad libbed that. So I want to keep it accurate to the designer's pattern to a certain degree. So I'm going to chain three and then what I want to do is that we need to maintain these double trebles that are leaning over it and you want to make sure they're always in the same side of the project. So when we do it the first time is that we are going to double treble. So we're gonna skip three and double treble into the fourth one here. And then we're going to have our double crochet into the next three that you skipped. And those double, those treble are, <laughs> those double crochets will be in the front of that. And you continue to do that. So you wanna make sure that these trebles that are leaning over um, will be um, in the back. When you turn your work, you have to pay attention to that. We'll talk about that in number nine to make sure that we get it in front because you want these to appear on the same side. So it's very strategic on how do you do it once you get it. It's easy. So let's begin row number eight. So let's begin row number eight. Leave a little bit of a longer tail and you can use a darning needle to sew those ends in if you have to. But if you can hide it by just going un underneath the stitches, it's a lot easier. 
So we're gonna start off in our very first stitch. You don't have to worry about any back looping at all. So we're just going to join it and then pull through. So, that, so that's a slip stitch join. And then you want to chain a total of three. So one, two, and three. Now lay this down on top of the line so that you can bury it. And now you're going to skip over the next three. So one, two, three, there's the fourth. That's the one you wanna go to. You're gonna double treble. So you're gonna wrap that hook in three times. Okay, so treble is wrapping twice. Double treble is wrapping three times and going into the fourth one. Lay down that straggler on top. You only have to do that for a little bit and then pull through. Now you've got five loops on the hook, yarning over, pulling it through once and then pull through again another two and do that until you get nothing left back on the hook. Just like that. So the three that you just skipped, you wanna work in front of the project. So you're gonna work in front of this. So just double crochet into those three, making sure that that treble stays in behind the work. So just kind of peel it backward and going up over top of the straggler as you do it. And then you can trap that in a position and you're double, you're doing a double crochet in each one of the skipped stitches. Now you have, I have the added burden right now of hiding in that loose end, but once you've got it hidden in, you're good to go. You can trim it for later. So now that those three are in, we're going to then skip the next three empty ones. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and you're gonna double treble. So wrap the hook three times and go to the fourth and then pull through and then pull through two, two, two and two all the way back. And then the ones that you have, see this one is part of that first treble so that's already taken. So the other three that you skipped, you just wanna come in front of the project, just peel that uh, double treble in behind so it's out of your way and double crochet the ones that you skipped. And you're gonna continue to do that all the way down the line. So in my case, I've only got it one more time and then it's done. So let's begin again. So wrap three times and that one's already taken. So you're gonna skip that one. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. And you're double troubling all the way over there. And then you're going into the ones that you skipped for double crochet. And then after you get that last double crochet in there, you just wanna skip over that existing one at the end and then just go in your final stitch for a double crochet. So you don't really see much happening, but look, it's on the back. And this is what we need to pay attention to as we go into row number nine. I want you to get rid of your stragglers before you get to that point. Get those out of your face. And now we have to pay attention then into row number nine. So row number nine, we're just gonna come back now and we are going to mimic what we just did. The difference is, is that we wanna keep these trebles on the same side. So we're gonna work in front of the project this time. So you're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and go to the fourth. Now here's a tip, this one here is the fourth. These trebles all line up with each other, these double trebles. So wrap in the hook three times, double treble into the fourth one which is the where the other double treble is and come back. So now you wanna keep this on this side of the project so it matches this one. So when you do the other double crochets that you skipped, just move so that the double treble stays in the front and you're just gonna capture those in the front end. And you got three in a row. So the, the stitch counts are the same, it's just a matter of being strategic about these herring bones. So let's do the next one. So you're gonna wrap three times. You're going to skip to the next one that's a double treble. So you're skipping over these three and you are going to double treble there. Isn't that easy? So you wanna keep that in the front this time. So just move it and shift it and get those double crochets by shifting the double crochet or the double treble in front. So I'm getting my doubles all messed up because it's double trebles and double crochet. <laughs> and a partridge and a pear tree. So there you go. So now we're gonna continue. So wrap the hook three times. And so this is the last time it'll happen up here for me, but you have to go all the way across. So you're skipping to the fourth one, which is the double treble. So you can just look for it, it's really quite easy. And then 
double crochet in the other ones keeping that double treble in front. And once you have that done all the way across you are going to double crochet in the final stitch. So just jumping over that one and go into the turning chain and double crochet. And that was row number nine. So when we turn our project then we're gonna be in the back. So there's nothing happening back here. So this is obviously the back of your project. So now you want to begin row number 10. So we're going to do the herringbone again. So chain three counts as a double crochet. So go to the fourth one. You can kinda see how the grouping now is fours. So the fourth one is empty meaning that it looks bigger. Okay, but so you're skipping one, two, three, go to the fourth and double treble into that one. And now we wanna keep the double treble towards the back side because that's where all the action is. So you're going to double crochet in front of that one. So just peel it behind, get it out of your way and double crochet the ones you skipped. Okay, so once you get that one done then wrap three times go to the fourth. So one, two, three, four. It becomes really obvious once you get used to it. And then you want to double treble or you want to double crochet in the ones you skipped by keeping that double treble in the back. Okay, we're gonna do it again. So wrapping three times, going to the fourth. I can just see it. Hopefully you can too. Okay, keep it to the back side and double crochet in the ones you skipped. So we have one more row of doing this concept and then we're back to the half double crochets that we've been doing before. So double crochet then right into the ending turning chain. So that's your last stitch. So let's turn it around. So you can see now all the actions happening over here. So we're gonna do one more row of this. So chaining at three and skipping to the fourth one which you can see where it goes. Do a double treble there. And then you wanna keep that in front so you're gonna peel it forward and just come in from the other stuff from behind. So one, so you got three double crochets. You have to apply in there. Don't be afraid to move those stitches out of the way. Once you get that done, begin again. So wrapping three times, coming to your next one. Okay, and then coming forward. Okay, and then continuing again. So wrapping three times. And then you go all the way across of course and yours will be bigger. And then this is it for the herringbone section. But we're not done the repeat pattern yet. We still have some more half double crochets to do, two more. And uh, then it, you will go start back at number two. So at the end of this one, which will be just in a moment, I will finish off. So you're coming into the turning chain to finish. And then that's it. So you can just get rid of your extra yarn. You'll notice that this may have expanded a little bit. That's because the stitch is more open. No big deal. So trim your yarn, hide in your loose ends and then we're gonna begin to do half double crochets again and let's do that next. So just hide your yarn. I'll see you here in just a moment. So let's turn it over and this is where I finish. So I wanna turn it over and start my half double crochets. So we're gonna start, just create a slip knot to begin and we're going to start again right in the top of the first one. So the first row it does not say to do back loops. So don't worry about that. So just attach it with the slip stitch that I'm about to do and then chain two. Doesn't count as anything because I'm telling you not to. It doesn't state that in the pattern. This is me ad-libbing. So you're just gonna come into the same one and do a half double crochet and then you're just gonna continue to move along. So you can actually see the stitches so you see they're in groups of four. So if you're going wrong at any spot, um, it really gives you an indication. So you're just gonna half double crochet in each one of the stitches going all the way across. And I'm going right up over top of the straggler so that I can lose it. And then I just keep on going across. So please do that all the way for row number 12. And then see me back here in just a moment. 
So I'm coming all the way to the end. Don't forget that turning chain. If anything that, that's where you could screw up. So you're gonna turn your work and now 13 is the same as what we already know. So let's begin. So you're gonna chain two. Does not count as a stitch. And you're back in the back loops again for number 13. So what I need you to do is that I need you to repeat rows number two through 13 once again. And yes you were doing row number two right now but this is included as number 13. The reason for them asking you to do it the way it is is that you need to watch these herring bones. So the nice thing about this particular design is that you can see clearly where the herring bones are gonna end up. So always plan that the herring bones will show up on the one side of the project only. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. So all you're just going to do then repeat rows number 2 through 13 a total of 9 times and then what you want to do is that once you're satisfied with that you're gonna end and do rows number 2 through 5 and then that's it. So what I'm gonna quickly do with you, I said I wasn't going to but all I'm just gonna do is show you how to just go down the edge. So once you have this done and you're satisfied you can just simply just chain up 2 and evenly space your half double crochets down the side and you're using the main color here. So you're keeping those herring bones special. So there's no magic number. It's just a matter of just going into the side of the work all the way down. If it starts to buckle on you that means that you're, you're uh, rushing the process. Now when you have major spaces I would just go into a chain section. Don't go into like a whole space because then it looks terrible <laughs> to put it mildly. So just don't uh, be, don't worry about those gapping spaces. Just go into chains. You can see it's not a big deal and it looks a lot nicer too. So what you're going to do is that both sides will be done. So see how I went into a gap? See how it pulls it open? You don't want that. So both sides will just ha simply have you just going down the side and then that's it. That's all you need to do for this particular concept and uh, the base will already have been done with this uh, color so then you don't have to do the tops or the or the base and you just have to simply just half double crochet down the side. Just like you see me doing. So just kind of tug on it a bit. Make sure that it's kind of wants to lay flat and then you're good to go and then once you get to the other side like once you get to the, the bottom section see how it's kind of pulling so you just want to make sure that you're not rushing the system at all. Throw in that extra stitch so that it appears to relax. And then coming into the final. Just like that. I am going to show you how to weave in your ends in just a moment. So once you're satisfied with that all you're just going to do then is just turn your work and then start and attach and then half double crochet up the side and then finish off and that will like make it look good. Now if you're concerned at all about any of these loose ends what you can just do is use a tapestry needle. Just throw it through the eye of the needle and just drag it underneath the stitch work. And because you've already, it's already in a slip knot formation for the most part so all you're just going to do is, and I would favor the back side. So if you're gonna go out of this stitch, just stay towards the back. So just bring it through to the back and concentrate on the back side. Okay, so just pulling it through and just hide it in some stitch work in the back. This is a really big needle. I've been using really fat yarn and this is not the right size needle for this gauge of project. So you're just gonna weave it into the back and then you can safely cut it. So this is be how you do the herringbone afghan. It's actually a really neat uh, concept. You end up with these really cool ideas and then once you're satisfied just trim out all your loose ends and then you're good to go. You'll also have to do the starting uh, one as well. Hide those in with the tapestry needle and then you're good to go. Have a great day and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.